Again, the main important thing that I recommend when you guys are doing these problems is to, first of all, create your, uh, just create a picture. And again, it doesn't matter. You could create two different pictures. You can create one that's going to have an obtuse angle, or you could have a all acute angles of your bleak triangle. It doesn't really matter. I always just like to just draw the triangle that I always do, which, you know, A, B, C. Okay? So we know A is 30 degrees, and we know the opposite side length of A is 6, and we know B is 7. So therefore, obviously, I'm going to want to use the law of sine, or sorry, law of cosines, and we're going to want to find the angle B first. Yes? Law of cosines? No, sines. Sines. I messed up. I misspoke. I'm sorry. So therefore, to do that, I have 6 over the sine of 30 degrees is equal to 7 over the sine of b. I'm not doing anything with c, just like the last problem. Does everybody at least follow me from this step? Is everybody OK with me on this step? Yep. Then you could apply cross multiplication, or basically just get the b off the bottom. You'd multiply by sine of b on both sides, and then divide by the reciprocal. But basically what you have is the sine of b is going to equal 7 times the sine of 30 degrees divided by 6. I'm just doing the solving stuff quicker because to save time. All right, so now let's go and evaluate what that would be. So I do 7 times the sine of 30 degrees and then divide that by 6. And I get 0.58333 repeating. Now, to, si to actually find the angle B, I need to use sine inverse. So I do sine inverse So I basically would just do second answer oops, I'm sorry, sine inverse of second answer. I'm not going to want to round anything yet, but I get 35.685. Um, I will now round this to the 10th, so it would be 36.7. I'm sorry, 35.7. Sorry. Does everybody follow me? OK. Now, I do want to check from this. Um, you guys notice that this is an angle side side, right? Or side side angle, correct? So therefore, I need to check for my ambiguous case. Now remember, when you have the sine, just think of pi over 6. The sine of pi over 6, the sine of pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, first quadrant and second quadrant. The sine of those two angles is exactly the same, correct? So we basically found our angle in the first quadrant. We need to find our angle in the second quadrant. huh? So therefore, I'm just going to do 180 minus 35.7. And I'm just going to call this b prime. It's not really. So that would be 180 minus 35.7 equals 144.3. Now, could I add A and B prime and still have enough room for an angle C? Yes. So guess what? I'm going to use B and P prime. So case one, we're going to use B. For case two, we're going to use B prime. OK? So case one. Case one, we know what b is. See, if you guys remember, in this last problem, when we did this last problem, I subtracted it from 180. But when I took that, that angle from 180 and I added it to my original angle, it was above 180. So therefore, there was only one case. But now, when I subtract my angle I found, I subtract it from 180, I have enough room for this plus this to give another value of angle for c. So if I know b, so case one, a lot of times I like to, again, create a triangle so I could fill in. So in this case, I have a, which is 30 degrees, b are 6, b is 7, and now I'm saying b is 35.7. So if I have 30 and 35.7, can I figure out what c is? Of course I can. So c equals 180 minus 30 minus 35.7. 
So do 180 minus 35 minus 30, 35.7, and I get 109.3 degrees. Does everybody see that? No, yes? OK. So now I still need to figure out what the length of C is. But I can just use, going back to using my law of sines. So therefore, I can just do 6 over the sine of 30 equals C over the sine of 109.3. So when I go back and look at this, um, so now, again, I solve for C. C is equal to 6 times the sine of 109.3 degrees divided by the sine of 30 degrees. So 6 times the sine of 109.3 degrees, and then divided that by sine of 30 degrees. And that's 11.32. OK, yes, uh, I mess up. Huh? It's 114.3. What? What's 109? Uh, 180. 180 minus 35 minus 35.7? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, you're right. I typed it in wrong. Dang it. Thank you for letting me know. So therefore, I do 6 times the sine of 114.3, and then divide that by the sine of 30 degrees, which everybody should know the sine of 30 degrees by now, which is sine of 30 degrees, 1 half. 1 half, so it's 10.93. Or if I just reduce this, it would be 10.9, or simplify, or round it, right? So congratulations. That's case number one. That's for B, though. There's two cases, B or B prime. So for B prime, our triangle looks a little bit differently. For B prime, we now have A is 30 degrees. 6, B is 7, and then we're saying 144.3. Okay? So now, when we're looking at this problem, um, now we just need to figure out our C. So we do C is equal to 180 minus 144.3 minus 30 degrees. So we do 180 minus 144.3 minus 30. And you get 5.7. So it's small, right? Really small angle. But it's possible. Then we just need to do, last thing we need to do is law of sines again. So I'll do 6 over, so that's uh, 5.7. Wait, that was, that's not C, that's B, right? No. Yeah, that's angle C, angle C. So therefore, I do 6 times the sine of 30 degrees equals um, C over the sine of 5.7. So then again, to solve for C, you multiply by 5.7 um, on both sides. So you basically, or you could do cross multiplication, whatever you guys want to think about it. Um, but you basically have C is equal to 6 times the sine of 5.7 divided by sine of 30 degrees. So now we just use our calculator again. 6 times the sine of 5.7 divided by the sine of 30 degrees. And I get 1.19. Now, if you guys look at this compared to the side lengths, does how big the side is compared to um, compared to the angle measure feel like they kind of match up? 
This one doesn't really match up as well. And yes, those would be your two solutions back of this. Yes, that's a rubber pencil. Good job, guys.